What's up? Welcome back to Nostalgia. Dave here with a review of Leave the World Behind, the new psychological apocalyptic thriller film from Netflix, directed by Sam Esmail, starring Julia Roberts, Hersha Ali, Ethan Hawke, and Mahala Harold. This is adapted from the Rumin Alam novel of the same name from just a few years ago. Netflix won the bidding war, put this out as one of their fall uh, slate of movies. Perhaps not as hyped up as, say, Maestro, but still a significant release from Netflix nonetheless. And I was certainly anticipating Leave the World Behind because I'm a big fan of Sam Esmail, Mr. Robot, his signature series on USA that ended back in 2019. That made my top 10 shows of the 2010s. I was absolutely uh, floored by that show. One of my favorites of all time, for sure. Also really liked his Amazon two-season series, Homecoming, which, of course, featured Julia Roberts in its first season. And when you look at this cast, Julia Roberts, Hawk, Mahala Harold, of course, one of our favorites right now, thanks to her star turn on Industry on HBO, and, of course, the return of Mahershala Ali, one of our great movie stars. Uh, it's kind of selling itself, I would have to say. And in a small role, we have Kevin Bacon as well. Always nice to see him. And yeah, this is a, a film that I think has a lot of those Sam Esmail trademarks. The cinematography, the blocking, the camera panning, the uh, shifting perspective from the first floor to the basement, the inside of the wall to the outside. Very reminiscent to all those, those of us who know Sam's uh, camera work in the past, his, his, his visual flair. Definitely familiar, but in a good way. And that was all great. You know, I think this is a film that will definitely be challenging to though to some. I think because the ending's probably a bit polarizing due to the kind of lack of overt resolution. This is a film that has a gigantic conflict at its very core, but is not a film that's really trying to tell you much about that conflict, I guess you could say. It's more interested in how these characters are reacting to what they do and don't know. So it is absolutely a must watch movie but i think the takeaways will really depend on the viewer so the, the premise is ultimately really solid you have julie roberts and ethan hawk's characters they're married they take their two uh children with them on a kind of spur of the moment vacation leaving their home in new york city leaving brooklyn and taking a, a seemingly weekend vacation over on long island renting a house and in the middle of the night uh the owner of this house, who they rented from, you know, from on Airbnb or whatever, Herschel Ali, it's his home. He shows up with his, you know, adult daughter, played by Mahala, and they need a place to stay. And that's kind of where, like, the movie, like, kind of sets off, because there's a caginess to Julia Roberts' character, Amanda, where she just doesn't trust uh, G.H., Mahershala's character. She, she's suspicious. And she's prickly. And I think credit to Julia because she plays a character that is really unlikable for the majority of the movie. Um, but anyway, they end up staying together. And what becomes increasingly clear is that some kind of apocalyptic event is happening. And uh, the TV goes out. The internet goes down. GPS stops working on the phone. Uh, GH finds a sat phone at a neighbor's home. Even that isn't working. And it starts to become pretty clear that the United States is under some kind of coordinated attack, although it's unclear by who or for what reason. Uh, you have Ethan Hawke's character, Clay, trying to drive into town, getting a Death to America pamphlet dropped on him by a drone when he's in his car. Like, It's definitely unsettling, and the movie leads to um, some big shots, some big moments where you see... Well, where GH, he survives a plane crashing on the beach very close to where he was um, after d stumbling on the wreckage of a previously already crashed uh, plane, right? That's like a big set piece thing. You have a, a scene where Mahala and Julia look out and they get this gaze upon, you know, Manhattan and they see uh, mushroom clouds and bombs. And at one point there's this big almost like emp like um noise distortion that hurts everyone's ears and all that's very unsettling 
and disturbing as the characters start to adapt to their new reality. But really, the movie isn't interested in telling you anything about that conflict at all, anything about what's happening to the greater world. It's really only interested in these characters and how they're reacting with each other, coming to grips, coming with acceptance of their new situation, GH and Mahala's character, Ruth, realizing that they're never going to see uh, their mother slash wife ever again. She's almost assuredly gone. Um, yeah, it, it's it's pretty disturbing. It, and it's funny because the way I think the way the movie, you know, concludes, you know, we have this scene where um, uh, Julia and Ethan Hawke's uh, teenage son he gets sick, seemingly bitten by a bug in the woods. We're kind of unclear what happened. Did he get radiation? Did the loud noise affect him? It's obviously left ambiguous intentionally. They end up tracking down uh, Kevin Bacon's character, who GH knows from the neighborhood, and trying to have get him get help because they can tell he's kind of a prepper type character. And he gives you like the faintest of morsels of like what's going on with the greater plot of the outside world. But even then, the whole like. Uh, having to protect your own versus helping others thing. I guess it's a bit like on the nose. It doesn't get too deep. Um, but where a classic like Samism happens, classic S smile touch is the immediately following moments where, where the movie ends, where it's a culmination of everything that's happened to what happened with uh, Julia and Hawk's uh, daughter character to this point. She's uh, younger than their son. And she's been obsessed with trying to finish watching uh, Friends. She's on the last episode, but her her tablet is no longer working. There's no connection. Even the TV can't play the reruns. And obviously, she's a very like screen-addled Gen Z, Gen Alpha kid. And yet, she feels helpless and unable to continue to discern the happiness that she got from that show as a result of un- being able to finish watching Friends. And it's actually like I think pretty amusing and underrated aspect of this film because it's it, that that sense of innocence, but also like direct value proposition on like your broader entertainment. Having like the littlest character, youngest character, be the only one to like seemingly have some kind of center as you watch everyone else kind of start the spiral and come to grips with what's going on. It's pretty amusing, and the way the movie ends is Rose, the daughter, she stumbles across the na- a neighbor's home who G.H. had uh, found, G.H. was aware of, and then Kevin Bacon's character let on that they, they, they might have a like a doomsday shelter in the basement because he had heard about some off-permit work going on, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, Rose kind of stumbles on that house looking for food, and she stumbles across the safe room and discovers this fully functioning, ready-to-go safe room that the family clearly should move to ASAP, both families, <laughs> And in it, what does she find but a wall of DVDs and VHS? And what does she find but the Friends final season collect DVD? Puts it on, and she puts on the final episode, and her face breaks into a smile. We hear the Friends theme song begin, and the movie ends. And I think it's a very bold choice, I have to say. You know, I think some of the stuff along the way is probably where the movie Maybe you might lose some people, and that I think abruptness of with a lack of clarity in the ending definitely might lose some people as well. But I really like that as an ending. You know, I think some of the other stuff is a bit um, surface level, where um, Mahala's character Ruth, she's really not hitting it off with Julie Roberts as Amanda at all. Amanda and Ruth are constantly butting heads. It's kind of referenced that maybe Amanda was distrustful of them from the start because they're both black, but it's never really like said anything more beyond that it's not really explored too much um she's kind of just kind of broadly like a karen character that definitely could have used more touch if you were going to take it in that route also there's some amusing moments with like wild animals outside like uh rose keeps seeing like a gigantic herd of deer uh there's a really cool like split second scene at night where you see all the deer in the backyard you see the glowing lights out in the darkness that was sick but there's a moment towards the end out in the woods where Amanda and, and Ruth together have to kind of like warn, scare off the CGI deer herd. And I'm not really sure exactly what the purpose of that scene necessarily is, to be honest. Um, but it was interesting. 
So yeah, you know, I think overall, like leave the world behind. It's unlike to spend anything else I've seen this year. And I mean, when you have Julie Roberts and Hawk and Harold and Mahershala Ali, who just oozes charisma, oozes presence, as we all know at this point, like they're all giving great performances. And even if I think the script might be a little up and down overall, and again, that resolution might not be for everyone, I think overall it's a worthy endeavor. And I really hope Sam continues to uh, keep working. You know, I know his Megalopolis adaptation uh, at Apple got canned right before the strike began due to a lot of uncertainties with the strike. So we don't really know what he's working on next. But of course, I think Sam Esmail is a pretty in-demand talent. And of course, we know all these actors are super in-demand as well. We'll be hearing from them as, as well. So yeah, let me know. How did you feel about Netflix's Leave the World Behind? Did the polarizing aspects uh, make or break it for you? Let me know what you thought. And for more movie reviews and my best movies of 2023, subscribe. And I'll see you next time.